Hey guys, my name is Adam, and this is Objective Theory, a first impression series where I give my thoughts on a game that has piqued my interest. Today I'll be looking at Papers, Please, which is an indie title with a lot of unique concepts that I've never really seen before, and this title actually impressed me all the way from the beta. It is developed and published by 3909, however, Lucas Pope is a name that keeps coming up throughout the game, so um, I'm not sure if it's just him, but on the Steam store page it does say 3909, so I'm not sure. It was released on Steam on August 8th of 2013, so I'm a little bit late, but not too late. Um, it's better later than never, because I have a lot of stuff to say on this game. It's really a great game that challenges a brand new idea. The idea that you're an immigration officer that has very limited space to work with, you're barely making enough money to survive, and you need to make sure that you're not letting smugglers, spies, and terrorists through your checkpoint. If you do, then your day is going to be cut short by a big explosion, and that's not fun. You need to make sure that you have all your stuff straight, but you also need to let through enough people to make a living for you and your family. It's a game that challenges you on a moral level because there's a lot of people that are begging you to get through. Because if they go back, they might die, and it really makes you think. And that's something a lot of AAA development studios have trouble doing. Meanwhile, indie titles like Papers, Please do it quite well. They really do set an example, and I like that a lot. So if you're interested in the background, of course you're an immigration inspector. You are part of the communist state of Ostrotska, which has just ended a six-year war with the neighboring country of Kalechia, and now you are reclaiming your rightful half of the border town Greston. You are given that job as an immigration officer to control the flow of people entering the Ostrotskan side of Greston from Kalechia, and naturally the Kalechians are... I guess they have a bit of a chip on their shoulder. They don't like you. Not at all. And I find it very funny how a lot of them are actually going to come right to you and start complaining. That's what I love most. It, it really is funny. But other than that, let's take a look at the options menu. And there isn't much here because it's a very simple game. Um, it's not graphically impressive, but it's not meant to be because it's meant to be dreary and depressing. And it does that quite well. It's meant to be a very oppressive government setting. And that's what it does. You can turn full screen on and off. I personally am going to leave it on. There is nudity, and that's simply because you're going to need to start scanning people at some point, and uh, you're going to have to make sure that we don't have anything crazy happen. Um, for example, they could be carrying a knife on their, on their leg or something like that. They could have bombs strapped to their chest. There's a bunch of stuff like that. So you can turn this on and off. You can detain people that have illegal weapons or contraband, and you'll get a little extra money off that as well. There is an easy mode, but I highly recommend not putting that on, because this will give you an extra 20 credits per day. Credits is obviously the money, and that's what you use to live. This is a game meant to be about stress. You're not meant to have a lot of money. It's really bad if you have a lot of money, because quite frankly, it's, it's meant to challenge you. It's meant to make you uh, make tough decisions. You're meant to make tough decisions is, I guess, the best way to put it. So I definitely recommend leaving this off unless you literally can't beat the game otherwise then you can turn it on because the story mode is still pretty good. Now there is a date format option here and this is greatly appreciated because I don't believe they had this in the beta and quite frankly some people are more comfortable looking at this than they are looking at this. I personally prefer this date format and that's exactly what I'm going with. Papers, Please is a game about time management, so you need to be able to scan things quickly. If you can't determine something in, a, in like the blink of an eye, then you're in a lot of trouble because you need to send people through quickly or you need to send them out quickly. Really depends on what you're going to do. Also, there are music and sound settings, which is greatly appreciated. I'm going to leave it right in the middle on all accounts there, which is pretty much to be expected. And we can get started. So, story mode is very interesting. They've added tons of content. In the beta, there was about 30 minutes of content and it wasn't really that in-depth. There wasn't that much stuff. I'm on day 13. I believe there was like six days, maybe? Maybe four or something in the beta? They are way past 13 now. I'm not done with story mode. This is just where I've gotten to. Again, this is a first impression series. If you want to review, then you're going to go elsewhere. But day 13, they start throwing bunch of, like a ton of stuff at you. I'm going to start with day two, and then we're going to skip ahead to day 13, or day 12, maybe. And we'll see exactly what they throw at us, because quite frankly... It gets insane. So we're going to start with day two. And you get a little brief description here. And we can get started. And we'll see exactly how well we do. So every day, you're going to get a newspaper, which may or may not contain valuable information. The Greston Checkpoint, a success. Entry restrictions to relax, admit foreigners. Analysts upbeat. Increased trade and cooperation predicted. So first day, very productive. We got a lot of stuff done. Uh, keep in mind, there are going to be spoilers here because there's some stuff that is linear. Not, not very much of it, because you can just 
flat out refuse people that may have blown up your country otherwise, but there is some linear stuff here. So let's walk to work, and now we get to see the game. So, there is a nice line of people here. There is a security guard, just one, mind you, so that's not much security, but this is the border checkpoint. You obviously can't cross over here because this guy will just flat out shoot you, um, but you can go through the checkpoint, and here we are. We can click the megaphone at any point to get started. But first off, let's take a look at our workspace. This area right here is your information pane basically you're going to be able to take a look at anything here now keep in mind this is a very limited space you can't actually see anything outside of this as you can plainly tell but every day you're going to get a piece of paper like this that will give you your exact orders so inspector from today foreigners with a valid passport are permitted to enter your booth's inspection hardware is now installed check all passport information carefully for discrepancies deny any entrant of inconsistent information and there's a bunch of pages to this there's an inspect mode as you can clearly tell right here you can actually highlight some discrepancies and we'll get into that later on glory to our Stratska. so this is obviously a communist country they're you know glory to the whatever country glory to china whatever you get the point now this over here is all the stuff you possibly could have this is the little desk where people will put their papers for you to look at and you have an audio transcript right here in case they say something that doesn't match up to their paperwork which does actually happen it's um kind of rare but it does happen also you have a little bit of a rule book and the ministry of admission are absolute jackasses and they're going to throw a bunch of rules at you very quickly you're going to have pages upon pages of rules that you need to follow you need to make sure that everyone has the proper paperwork because quite frankly it's papers please you know you expect that you also have this little uh, lever here that will put up and down these bars, which is kind of neat. Um, the day actually does start when you click the megaphone for the first time, so that's nice. It doesn't just immediately send you in. I like that a lot. But personally, I have a little bit of a setup that I like to use. I like to put the rules in the corner here so it takes up the least amount of space. And then over here, you'll notice that there is a date. Now, there's a lot of paperwork that could be outdated and in which case you're going to need to highlight the discrepancies and it's quick to just click on that date right there so that's what i like to do other people have different tactics i like this a lot though this gives me a lot of access um also i could just do that so it really depends on what you want to do for example instead of clicking on this i could click on this really depends on what you're comfortable doing i don't like going all the way over here to click i personally prefer clicking right here so let's get the first person in and glory to our Stratska because quite frankly this place is awesome. Alright so first person as you can tell nothing too graphically impressive but the entrant does have a passport we need to make sure that everything is pretty much set to go. Um let's see yeah seems pretty much fine the only thing that I don't know about is the issuing city but like I said you need to make sure that you are quick to do stuff. Also over here you'll have your denial and approval stamps which is very important you need to do this with everybody and that's pretty much it you actually have to align the passport as well which is a unique feature um, over here you'll notice that look at this expiration date 10 25 1982 the, obviously that is expired so we're going to go ahead and highlight the discrepancy and there we go discrepancy detected now we can interrogate him on what he's doing you know what are you doing let me through you know some people have a clever response other people just say let me through i'm going to deny you because i cannot let you through glory to our Stratska, sir all right next person Looks like a uh, woman. Yeah, okay. Just make it sure. Sometimes it's tough to tell. Um, you look to be fine. Again, the only people that I am iffy about is the issuing city. I could be wrong on that. The problem is, in order to get to the issuing city, you need to flip through the rule book a lot. And quite frankly, this is a game about time management. Some stuff is going to slip through. You can't get everything right. But sometimes you can. Alright, so it's telling me to hurry up. Are you actually a woman? Let's see. Yeah, you are. Alright. It's really tough to tell, man. I mean, that could be a dude. No way to know. But you look to be fine. Yeah. Off you go. Again, issuing city is probably the biggest annoyance in the opening stages of the game. But so far, I'm getting lucky. I'm not actually having any problems. So, as you can tell, very basic. You're just stamping passports, right? You know, n nothing too crazy. It's pr wow, he has beard here. Hello? Yeah, y you are not looking the same. The years have been cruel. Uh, I mean, it kind of looks like, oh my god, he looks so different. I'm going to say no, because his hairline is, his hairline's totally different. No. I'm going to say deny, no. It doesn't look like you, I'm sorry, it, it really doesn't. 
Looks like I was right on that. Maybe it just didn't tell me anything, but you will get citations if you're wrong. And they're trying to distract me. Hello, handsome. You look bored. And they're going to give me pretty much a stripper joint club ticket. So that's kind of nice. Um, just ignore those. They're trying to pack a bunch of stuff on your screen. Just ignore it. This looks good to me. I will stamp. There we go. Again, this is the extremely basic part of the game. It gets much worse. They try to start you off nice and easy and relaxed and, you know, whatnot. But things get really awkward really quick. Are you actually a woman? I guess you are. It's so tough to tell with some of these people, I swear. Oh, yep, here we go. All right, guy just jumped the fence. You saw that, right? Right up at the top. We're going to take some shots here. I assume he's going to shoot. Yep, there's the shots. Missed the first one, hit the second one, grenade. There we go, there's the terrorist attack. Now this is one of those scripted events that you can't actually control. Other times, people that you let through may just blow themselves up when they get to the end over there. That happens. Over here, you'll notice that the day was shut, uh, was cut short, rather. And this means you're not making as much money. That's really important to remember. Luckily, we have 25 in the savings, otherwise we would be broke. Something that they did change from the beta is that you can choose to not pay food or not pay heat, in which case your family is going to become much worse off. But it's important if you actually want to keep yourself um, out of bankruptcy. That's important to remember. Um, but, you know, some days are cut short and you need to remember that. You're not always going to be at the peak of your um, mental state. And I mean, there's always going to be problems at the border checkpoint. And if the day is cut short, you're probably going to be losing a lot of money. That's something to keep in mind. But that is all I really wanted to show you from day two. Now we're going to skip forward to something crazy, which is day 12. Day 12 blew my mind. They've added so much stuff. I actually have not, oh, do I want to do that? Let's, uh, yeah, let's go with this. Day 11. Here we go. You'll notice that I had tons of money there, and that's actually from a story event. But uh, theft at the Ministry of Admission. Limited effects, few items stolen. Integrity domestic spying exposed. Whistleblower on the run. All right. So we're going to, once again, get a message from the Ministry of Admission. They're going to tell us brand new stuff. You'll also notice that we have a whole bunch more security since that terrorist attack on day two. Bunch more. This is, again, story-driven stuff, and you can do a bunch of cool stuff with that. I'm not quite sure what to do with this, but um, that's probably coming in future days. Arstratska, Ministry of Admission, official bulletin. Inspector, a break-in at MOA offices have... May have, been comprom may have compromised our document sealing plates. Nothing important was stolen, but intelligence suggests counterfeiters have already begun forging official Arstotskin documents. Continued. Okay. Forgeries. Double check that required documents contain valid seals correlating missing or wrong seals against the appropriate entries in the documents chapter of your rulebook. Glory to Arstotska. All right. So what this means is that people have started um, to essentially forge. Let me show you on the rulebook here. They started to forge this. This is the valid seals, okay? So if they don't have something like this, then they are going to be caught, hopefully, if I remember to do this, and they will be in big trouble. However, you're going to start having tons of, of stuff thrown on your desk, so you really don't know what to expect. And look how many rules there are here. So entrant must have a passport. All documents must be current. Citizens must have an ID card. Foreigners require an entry permit. Workers must have a work pass. No weapons or contraband. And diplomats require authorization. I must say, diplomatic papers are really annoying to sift through. They really are. But let's get the day started, and we'll see exactly how well we do. All right. Papers, please. And we're going to have a visit. Okay, you're not here to work, which should be fine. If we take a look at these... Um, passport numbers, then you are matching up. Yep. Seems pretty much reasonable. I'm going to say that you are totally good. And you can... Oh, wait. I think that's right. Yeah, okay. I was just making sure the seal on there was correct. I think it was. I don't know. Yeah, I was wrong. Damn. Thought so. Oh, no, not this guy. I hate this guy. He actually came to me with a passport made, like, pretty much colored in with crayon. This guy is kind of the humor source of this game. He's, he's the comic relief, and that's kind of funny. But um, I believe he actually has all the right paperwork this time around. It does look like it. So, yeah, he is actually totally fine. So we can let you through at long last. He, he comes here, like, five times. And uh, Stratzka is the best, and we get something special. 
This is a little medallion. It is essentially an achievement in the game. If you make it through some certain um, event, then you are going to get one of those and you can hang them on your wall. You'll notice that I do have a, a certificate of achievement, basically, on the wall. And I thought that was really clever, putting that kind of stuff up on the wall. That That's really clever. That's something the beta didn't have. All right, Sophia Wilhelm, you seem to be fine. That is right. I, oh God, is it? Damn it! I, ah, oh, I, um, I'm gonna say you're okay. I think that was right. It might have been circular instead of the square. Damn it! Oh wait, incorrect purpose response. Never mind. All right, so this is a uh, security guard. I'm doing really bad because obviously, you know, it's twelve. It's day 12. They have tons of stuff. But we get some money because we ended up detaining a couple of people. And this guy basically bribed us. He's saying, you know what? If you start detaining people, I get a little bit extra. So that means that I'll give you a little extra if you start detaining more people. Again, it's tying into moral reasoning and stuff like that. All right. So you have a ID card, which is good. Date of birth, the same. Yep. Seems pretty much reasonable. You don't have as much hair in this, which is a little... Yeah, you, you don't have as much hair. Now, the interesting thing is later on, you can do fingerprinting. That's, that's a unique feature. So if it does say... That, yeah, okay, so his name is... Yeah, so he is totally fine. And now, I can approve him. You want to make sure that you give him all of his paperwork back as quickly as possible, which is definitely important to do. Because you can get even more people in this way. Alright. You are immigrating, so you need an entry permit, buddy. Does he have one? You did not know it was required. Well, it sucks to be you then, because quite frankly, you're not giving me any... The order knows. Oh! Him. Yeah, so I'm not going to spoil what that is because I feel it's important to keep, you know, keep some stuff secret. But that is definitely an important guy, and I just screwed him over. Oh, well. All right. Let's see. Your hair looks different, but overall, I mean, that, that's to be expected. You have a work permit here. Valena, Pagiba. Yep. Should be fine. All right, next person. Oh, man. Forged work pass. Ah, I didn't even realize. Crap. All right. You're visiting. This is correct. This day always pisses me off because I don't like looking for seals. I'm really bad at that. Um, I think you're good. Yeah. I just need to keep letting people through at this point. I really do. Um, now, the one complaint that I really do still have with this game from the beta that they haven't done anything about... Ah, oh, great, this guy. Um, he gave me this. First agent was denied, second will come in two days. Do not make the same mistake. Yep. So, the inspection... Um, the, this thing right here, the inspection tool. This is very annoying. You don't actually know where to click. A lot of the time, it doesn't explain to you ever where you're supposed to click to inspect things. And that's a little bit of a problem. Um, I don't like that, really. Uh, it's tough to say where you should click. For example, if this is expired, where do you click? I mean, do you click on her? No, I, I guess not. You have no idea. You really don't. And that's really the same problem that I've had from the beta. It's understandable, though. Um, once you get used to it, then you know all of the possible things you can do. Again, you need to keep the rule book open in order to get people through quickly. And are, I didn't even look at anything about you. Um, yeah. Gone through. Again, when I'm talking, I'm not paying as much attention. I'm trying to give you my best possible impressions of the title. I do much better otherwise. Um, another nice thing that they have done uh, since the beta, and you do have an ID card, is that there are hotkeys for your booth now. So if you press spacebar, you will get the inspection tool, which is pretty nice. If you press tab, then you're going to get this. Personally, that's not much, but you actually do have to pay for it with in-game credits. Um, so you want to make sure that you have enough money to actually survive, and then you can get all your booth upgrades and so on and so forth. I'm really not paying attention at all. Um, really? I, I don't I don't understand kilograms that much, so... Yeah. 
I think you're good. Alright. So, we have the Certificate of Achievement, Ministry of Mission Recognition for Sufficiency. <laughs> I love how they put that. Just, you're, you're sufficient enough. That, that's important. You're moving, which, do, which does mean you need the entry permit. No? What? Oh, I let through somebody that's going to blow them up. That sucks. Yeah, there was the explosion. Ah, how annoying. Anyways, this is Papers, Please. Um, as you can tell, over here are the boof upgrades. Um, I'm not quite sure what this is, but... The day was cut short by a terrorist attack. Strange man brought money unchecked to burn it. So, a random guy gave me tons and tons of money. Um, so, I can uncheck this if I want to burn it. But I'm going to be at exactly zero dollars. I don't know what this does. This could be something really interesting. I haven't gotten to this point. I have no idea. I could burn this. I could keep it. I don't know. Something obviously bad is going to happen if I keep it. But you need to feed your family. And I have a feeling um, if I was in this guy's position, I would be taking the money wholeheartedly. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you can upgrade your boof again as well, which I'm not quite sure what that does. Um, but good stuff all around. So this is Papers, Please. It's a game that challenges your moral values. It's a game that makes you think deeply about other people and about yourself and your own family. It, that, that's what I like about this game. It, it does stuff that other AAA development studios can't do. That's unique to me. I mean, I love it. I love how they give you such little space on the screen. I love how they give you such ironic certificates of achievement. The, the fact that you're just sufficient. I like that. It has a good sense of humor, while also making you feel a little bit depressed. I like that. There's good comic relief in this game, but also it really makes you think. It makes you wonder exactly what's going on. But this has been Papers, Please. Let me know what you think of it down in the comment section below. Also, let me know what you think of Objective Theory as a brand new series. And I will see you guys in future videos.